Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How's everybody doing today? Everybody have a good day today? Yeah. Uh, isn't, it, isn't it a blessing to be alive? Yeah. Uh, isn't it a blessing to everything as well as it is with you? Uh, we give honor to God always. We give praise and sermon to the Holy Spirit. With all of these storms and fires. You know, I don't know if y'all paying attention, but it's fires blazing. Mm -hmm. In fact, on the outskirts of Fort Worth, yeah. uh, they, they got fires literally burning. Mm -hmm. You got storms. You had, we've had tornadoes. Yeah. We've got wars. I mean, we got a lot of things yeah. to try to yeah. deal with. And so it's just a blessing yeah. to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of lives lost right here in East Texas. I mean, when I say East Texas, I'm talking about, about East Texas yeah. due to these storms. And then by the grace of God, you know, not we were better than those people because certainly we wasn't, but it was just by the grace of God that these things did not happen to us. So we're grateful for that and we praise God for that and we thank God for all of you being here this evening. We know that some of you all are on vacation, we know some of you are out of town, and we hope that you enjoy your out of towners and the break that you took and all of that. Um, and so we're just happy to have you back, happy Mom. to have, have you back into the fold. We're going we're gonna to have a song and a prayer, then we're going to go back, because uh, I want to get into the subject and uh, try to get into that. I do have the information package, and I went off last week and got all the information packed part of that list you have. It's here, so if you need some more handouts, go to your All right, if someone will just give me a song and a prayer, and we'll move right on forward to what we need to do. All right? I know that I It's a blessing to be here tonight. 
I'm excited yeah. about being here now. Yeah. Where I'm excited yeah. about being in the present. This is not a, I don't have a sheet that I'm saying this also. This is not a prepared statement. This just comes from the heart. Yes. Yeah. 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 When you mean something, you don't necessarily always have to write it down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to be here with you all. Yeah. And I hope and pray that uh, what we're doing here is making an impact. Amen. Amen. And I'm of the mind of if one person uh -huh. is made better, Amen. more resilient, more strong, more Amen. resourceful with this presentation, then I have achieved what I have set out to do. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm being made better. Oh, yeah. Amen. In my approaches, I try to help other people. I'm, I'm learning from the information that I have to take a, a maybe a different approach than maybe that I have been taking in the past. So I'm glad. I want to thank you all for your support. Uh, I, I just thank God put it, that he put it in your heart to, to come every day. Amen. Amen. The seriousness of and the nature of our coming. Because, y'all, I don't want to scare nobody. I'm not trying to scare people to be saved. But I'm telling you all, any, any of us that's intelligent read our Bible, I'm telling you, we got so many events going on worldwide, global, just a whole lot of things. It's, it's an indication that something's happening. Right. And I believe, I'm not here to tell you to sell your car, no, but I believe Christ's return is closer than it was even yesterday. Right. Right. I, I believe that his coming is imminent. And, that, and when I say imminent, I don't mean necessarily tomorrow or the day after, but I tell you based on what I read in Matthew 24, and I see all the world events, wars and wounds of war, social unrest, racial unrest, economy, shortage of good, right. all of these things, uh, it's just pointing to me and validating me that we're closer to Christ's return than we ever have been. So, so what would I tell you to do? If you don't know the Lord, mm. if you have not been saved, here I go talking that saved stuff. You told me you're going to talk about mourning and grief. Well, listen, you're going to mourn. Somebody's going to mourn even more if you die and they know you're not going to heaven. Mm. 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 And some believing. So I'm saying to everybody that don't, don't, don't procrastinate. If you don't know Jesus, get saved. Amen. Right? Yeah, accept the Lord as your personal Savior. And you can do that at home. Amen. You don't have to come to church and do that. You don't have to be in front of me to do it. Amen. All you got to do on your get on your knees is, Lord, and say, Lord, I confess my sin. Amen. I believe that you died. I believe that you raised. Amen. I believe that you yet alive. I want you to come into my heart and save me. And immediately you shall be saved. Amen. All right. That's what Romans 10 said. If thou confess, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, right? He'll be raised from there. Thou shalt be saved. Be saved. Mm -hmm. so, so I have to tell you that. I have to tell you that because I have your blood on my hands. Right? I, I, I am to watch, you know, and I, this is why I'm so serious about it. This is why I get worked up about it. Because I'm I'm the watchman of your son. All right. And I take that very seriously because God is going to hold me accountable. Amen. So I gotta get your blood off my hands. So if I have to tell you that over and over and over until you get it, I'm gonna be just like a redundant person. I want everybody to be saved. I'm talking about Paul. He said, "Brother, in my heart, desire, and prayer to God for Israel that they might say, be saved." He said, "I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not a part for them being ignorant of God's right, going about to establish that have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness which is of God." Amen. So my desire for you is that everybody be saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So as we go to that, that's going to help us deal with all of this stuff that's grief and more. If I know that my brother is saved, then I'm going to be all right if something happens to him. Amen. He has to leave this life. I'm going to feel a little bit better because I know where he's going. Amen. Right? It's good to know when our loved ones die and have some idea where they're going. Amen. And if they're saved, we know where they're going, right? They're going to be with their father and their God in heaven. So, so we talked about, talked about difficult relationships. You know, and, and we talk about when we die, that, you know, that, that depending on the priority, what kind of relationship we have with a person. And let me just say that don't ever go to bed mad at nobody. Amen. 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 Those old people taught us. That's right. The older people did. The, the young people didn't teach us that. The old folk told us never go to bed uh, mad at one another. Amen. You said, why? Because the person that you go to bed with, you may wake up and they could have had a massive heart attack while you were yet asleep, while they were asleep. Mm -hmm. So I always said, try to stay in a good relationship with everybody. Amen. Amen. That way when something happens, you don't have any regrets. Amen. If you have a falling out, and sometimes, listen, let's be honest, 
Sometimes we have falling out. Sometimes we have disagreements, even among Christians, even among biological brothers and sisters. We have, we have, we, somebody know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we need to change the word, but at the end of the day, we better rectify. Before the sun go down, we better rectify, because guess what? Because if somebody dies and you just have an argument, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be, in, you're going to be in bad shape the rest of your life, because you're going to be regretting and wishing you hadn't done something about it, right? Okay, so let's get that. We can take, we talk about, we can take it unexpected form to get that. You know, a person who has a difficult relationship, you know, go ahead. I think we got all the way down to that. We have to go all the way down. Keep going. We talked about the long illness. We move on to the last paragraph. Many people will be affected. They are prepared for loss because death is expected. Because we know that uh, we know that Hebrews 9 and 27 said, it is appointed. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It is appointed. Yes. Wants to die. Yes. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. And then comes the judgment. The judgment. The judgment. The judgment. Right? So we, we, we think, well, you know, I'm trying to get my family ready for me to die. Okay? Now, that sounds crazy. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Whenever I, I have a book at home, and in that book, and this is going to sound crazy to some of y'all, but, but it makes a lot of sense to me. Because I'm trying to keep my family to having the least amount of grief as they can. So I already got my film planned out. I got all this stuff. To, so Sister Brown, she had the last hour, but I got it all wrote out for her. So she won't have to worry about all of that, right? Because again, if Christ don't come, mm. I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. If the rapture don't experience, I'm going to die. I have, no deal, I have no problem dealing with that. Don't talk about death. That, I don't want to talk about it. At some point, you need to talk about it because it is a reality. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, it makes it so much easier on the person who's trying to plan for your, for your death when you die if you, if you give them a road map to try to map it out, right? Mm -hmm. Because some of the worst fighting happens after people die. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all, don't, don't raise your hand. You don't have to tell me. You might have already experienced it. Amen. Some of your brothers and your sisters and your aunts and your uncles, you think they're really good people and they seem to be good people until somebody dies. Amen. And you find out they can be the most unreasonable people you've ever met. Amen. But when there's a plan in place... That kind of, that makes it up so much better. I've already told my wife that if I'm on a life support machine and it's breathing air in me and I'm already brain dead, can disconnect me from the machine. I'm not leaving it. I'm not leaving it up to them to be fighting about it. I want them to unhook me so I can go on the glory. I don't want to be like a balloon. All they're doing is depressing and impressing. I want to be gone, right? These are the kinds of things we need to take care of because it helps us when we're dealing with our grief, it helps us to deal with our mourning, and it helps us to deal with our bereavement, that we have a plan. Amen. You gotta have a plan. So we when many people think they're prepared for death, but when it when the loved one has to die, it can still be a shock. Amen. I hear people die, so you serious? Did they really die? Yeah, they really died. Really? And I'll be shocked because but I shouldn't be because folk died all around us. You know what I'm talking about, right? Somebody called you and said, Sister so and so down. You said, Are you serious? Did they really? Because even though we know that we're going to die, we still come to us as a shock. Right? Because the old man said, Folk are dying now, and they never die. That's what he said. It's still just shock, great right? I'm trying to say it's sad and it's long. But most people, the actual death starts a normal grieving. Process. All right, we want to talk about, we're going to move to the next segment. The seven stages of grief. Remember, seven is the number of grief. Uh, seven stages, the seven experiences. Go ahead. The first one is disbelief and shock. Almost like the dream. You ever ask somebody that you were close to, they died and say, well, this is just a dream. When I wake up in the morning, this is going to be gone. You wake up in the morning, and it's still a reality. Mm -hmm. So the first stage is disbelief, shock, grief, a hit. It says the initial reaction to loss includes the feelings of shock. Learning that someone you love has gone creates a numbness and fills a person with doubt. Right? It makes you numb. It makes you feel like, you know, just non-existent. 
right? Uh, also, this is a form of emotional, you know, our brain, and I don't tell you how much, but I know, our brain has got mechanisms in it mm -hmm. so that when it gets in distress, it shuts itself off. Okay, let me put it this way. Okay, any of y'all have surge protective, any of y'all, any of you, group, you electric, uh, techie, gurus, <laughs> computer gurus, I've got all these high dollar smart TV, you know, sometimes, uh, you don't even have to be in the store, sometimes you can have a power surge. <laughs> and what that surge depended on how much you pay for. Now, if you went down there and paid $8 for one, it may not be as good as one that you're going to be paying for $50. But what that, what that surge protector does is that when it gets a rush of power to keep it from burning up the device, it will automatically shut it off. Yeah. Now, most of us who've got newer homes have what we have. We have a breaker box. Hello, somebody. I'm trying to make you understand. And, and we have a breaker box. Now, when I used to live on Mars, we had... We had a break the box and we had those little glass, um, little glass things. And what we used to do, uh, because we wanted to beat the electric company, and so what we would do, we would take a penny. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Come on, y'all. You can go ahead and minute now. Everybody. <laughs> it's, it's too bad. Yep. I ain't going to bother you, okay? But we'd take that penny, Brother Lee, and we put it behind and try to cheat the power company out, and then I'm almost burning up the house. <laughs> So, so we have breaker boxes now, but the design of the breaker box is that whenever there's a power surge or something that's not working right, rather than let it overload and burn up the house, it automatically shuts itself down. But well, the brain does the same thing. When our bodies are dealing with emotional problems, our brain has a tendency to shut it down. I want somebody. And so uh, this is a form of emotional protection, and it can last for weeks. It can last for weeks, right? We have to be careful. Let me say that. I know sometimes we mean well. But we have to be careful when we deal with people who are bereaved, who are going through grief, yeah. and who we want. We want them to just get over it. Yeah. Get over it, you know. But it's, it's really not that simple. It's, it's really not that simple. It's a little bit more complicated than that, okay? So it, it, it is for me. This time you spend all the reflect sadness, right? Of death. I was watching just, you know, I told you this last, but I just the other, matter of fact, I was watching something today, and it was fictional. But I got all emotional. I don't even know these people. They don't television, it's fictional. They crying, and I'm blowing snot too. <laughs> you know, because. Feelings. Yeah, feelings, emotions, you know. And so sometimes you have, a, you know, sadness of death. Death makes us sad. Amen. Even though we know what we know as Christians, it still makes us sad. sad. Yes. Right? That's a normal function, right? Uh, you don't have to be, but there is no cookie cutter. Now, y'all know cookie cutter. Recipe for grief is uncommon for them. Some people go through shock, phase, duration of funeral preparation. I found out when I was with my brothers been preaching all my life, that was one of the hardest things I had to do, was put my brother's funeral together. Mm -hmm. You would have thought, you know, you, you death around, you around death all the time, it should be just natural for you, just work that. Man, listen, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and then you got to get everybody on the same page. That's the hardest part of it right there. Amen. It's trying to get everybody on the same page so we don't be at the funeral fussing at one another. Amen. Hello, y'all, hello. Amen. So we won't be at the funeral uh, waiting to the Feel get halfway, and I come here to show how you know people got a way of letting me know when they're not pleased with things. Right. 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 These films, right. sometimes the worst behavior can be seen at a film. Right. Right. I wish right. I had somebody. Yeah, the worst behavior, folks do little things. If you're paying attention, little little gestures, you know. I don't go up when my brother go up, or I, or I wait till the funeral starts, and then I come in and make a just all kinds of little things to show my protest. But that ain't the time to do all of that. The time of a funeral is when a family, if they ain't never been together, they need to come together. Yeah. Because everybody yeah. needs the support of everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is this making any sense? Everybody yeah. needs the support, right? We need to build off each other's support, right? We don't need to be worried about what's going to happen to the land. We can do that later on. 
let's come on and mourn together and grieve together, right? And be bere bereaved together. And then the time will come, because the Bible says there's a time and a place for everything, yeah. right? Yeah. And there will come a time to divide. We're going to get 12 acres and we're going to get 19 acres and all this kind of stuff. All there'll be plenty of time for that. But let's, let's behave ourselves when it comes time to our mother's funeral, our dad's funeral, our brother's funeral. We can find out all that other stuff later in private. Amen. Don't don't bring that to the funeral. Amen. Right? Don't bring that to the funeral. Leave that at the house because everybody don't need to know that the family is right. This is the time where we come together and feed off one another. Amen. Make sense? Yeah. Make sense. Are you going to practice it or are you just saying uh-huh? Right. Are you going to do it the next time it happens or are you just telling me uh-huh so I can move on to the next one? <laughs> I'm saying it because this is what we need to be doing, right? Amen. Okay. Cause, cause, cause. It, it, I tell you, it be. the next thing is denial. The next thing I agree is stubbornness of the human spirit. Now, we all got some stubbornness. Believe it or not, I can be so stubborn. Amen. You haven't seen that side, have you? <laughs> Sister Brown, you back there. Can I be stubborn? <laughs> 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 We can be stubborn, Amen. especially with men. Amen. 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 Sometimes I'm finding out since I'm getting in this next age category that the older I get, mm -hmm. the more stubborn I'm coming. Amen. 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 We can be stubborn, right? We can dig. We can we can get a point and say, okay, I'm digging in. Amen. So. It's 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 this form this form of emotional protection. I mean, uh, this this part a person could deny a loved one's passing for weeks. You know, some people say, "Well, no, that mama didn't die, dad didn't die, yes they did." All the reason why I know a lot of times we don't understand why we do stuff at funerals. Do you know the reason why we view bodies? Do y'all really know what we know the real the real? I don't know if anybody ever told you this, and you may already know. But do you know the real reason why we go around view bodies and have weights and all these things? They have so clothes. that some people can see the body yeah. so it can help them with the reality yeah. that it really did happen. Yeah. That would be difficult for somebody whose who mm -hmm. loved one was, was killed and they never got any body and they don't have a clothes because they don't have nothing, no reality check that said that this person, that's why we go around and look at them and say, yeah, they really, they really did die. They're there. They're, they're. That's, that's a part of the process that we go through so that we can come to grips with that. Bit. People experience all kinds of denial. You know? Some people say, well, you know, I'm waiting on mama to come back. You know, I'm waiting on dad to come back. I'm waiting on mother. I ain't going to do nothing with this thing stuff because they come, but they're not dead. Amen. But we just, we just buried. We took them to Evergreen. Amen. We took them to the Keith Theater of the Pine. We took them to Spring Creek. We took them to Hopewell. We took them to Mount Oak. We took them to these places. But some people said, well, it didn't happen. Okay? It, that's a reality, y'all. Denial is a type of self-preservation. Again, helping, helping preservation, help my mind to deal with the reality in which I'm having to live. Amen. Right? Yes, sir? What about the situation that I was, you know, who was uh, talking about earlier in okay. the office? Okay. You know, like a friend of mine who was a uh, daughter was uh, kidnapped while he was in Vietnam. Right. And he never, he, he never got over it. Right. Well, possibly, I don't know what they did in regards to him, uh, by him being in Vietnam, but what would probably been a good thing for them to do is to take him to the cemetery, show her, show him her headstone that they had one, or whatever kind of grave indicate to help, now I'm just saying it won't work for everybody, but that's one of the steps to help him come to the realization that his daughter was died, had died. But she was well, he don't know if she dead or not. So he, he don't, don't know. He don't know. He don't have any closure. Okay, so he don't have any closure. No. So that again that goes back to what I'm just saying. To help in the denial part of it, that's why we have funerals and we have weights, you know, all these kinds of things to help us to get out of this mode of denial. Because until you come to the realization that that person had died and you stay in denial, you'll never be able to really function because it's going to keep you from functioning because you're still in a state of denial. Amen. Death is a real thing. It's a real thing, right? Yeah. It's a real thing. When Adam messed up, we started dying. And we've been Amen. dying ever since, and we're going to continue to die, right? And so, yeah, yeah. That's why we do, that's what we do. That's why we do the way we do. So people can see that that person, don't touch him. Don't feel him. 
No. You know, do all whatever, you know, whatever that, you know, I'm telling you, this is generic. I'm not saying you need to do it specifically. I'm talking in general terms. Some people have to go and touch the body. Some people have to rub the head, touch the face. Hello, some of you saw people do, they touch and they grab hands. This is a part of that uh, being able to deal with the reality. That's why you need to leave people alone when, you know, let them do, you know, you don't want them to hurt themselves, but give them some leeway. Amen. And this will find, I, I, I don't want the job that I don't want the mature men job because I seen it on both ends. I know that they be trying to be professional, but at the same time they trying to protect folk, and at the same time they trying to run a business. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to juggle all of that because sometimes folks say, "Well, I ain't going back to him. He didn't let me. He didn't let me take an hour to watch my mother. I wanted to stay with my mother." I, well, listen, the reality of it, he is running a business. This is a business, so if he let everybody in the church take an hour with the dead body, we'll, oh, we'll never get out of here, right? So he's juggling, right? Trying to do his job, but at the same time trying to accommodate the family. And so us, there's got to be some, real, some reality and some reasonableness in order for us to be able to get through now. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Uh, Daddy Deborah was here. Uh, I had this experience. Uh, I done a funeral in Houston. And we were at the cemetery. And I'm so used to being at Evergreen, all these places, lollygagging, you know how we do when the funeral's old folks standing out, out keeping them people from going to, well, in these big cities, they ain't got, they, let me tell you right now, it, it sounds rude when you hear it for the first time, but then when you digest, you got to understand, these people have got 10 or 11 funerals in the same day, and they ain't got time for going around, be sitting around, uh, uh, playing around with Clarence Hall, about, talking about something, they trying to get to the cemetery, so when we got to that cemetery, we was out there, Shit and chat, and then I said, I need y'all to get in the car. So he said, I got a friend initially, I got a friend because I had never been exposed. But as I look back, about this man, run, they run it, this is a business. <laughs> they ain't got time for y'all to be out there shaking hands and dabbing and, and high fiving and pulling this way. Man said, Get in the car because I got 10 other fuel coming and I need you out of the way. <laughs> I said, oh, God, that's a bit exposed to like that. I, I kind of caught some family. He's not, that's the rudest guy I ever met. And then when I saw about it, I understood how it works. It's a business. Amen. Yeah. It's, it's, and the VA, for all y'all in it, that's better. If the VA schedule you to be in that cemetery at 2 o'clock, you better be there. You better be there, you better be there before 2 o'clock. When 2 o'clock comes and you're not there, buddy, you, you push on to the side. We're going to have to get you a new appointment. It can be weeks before they can get back to the cemetery. They don't play around. There ain't no games to be played because it's a business. Amen. That's right. That's right. Death is a business. I, I told y'all, you need two types of shares. We're going to move on. You need two types of shares. All right. Anybody know what I said? You need, you need blessed assurance. Amen. That gets you in the pearly gates. Amen. But when you go up in the community, he's going to need some life insurance. Amen. 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 Blessed assured Jesus is mine over the foretaste of holy divine. You don't want that. You can't devise it. Blessed assured down at the bank. They don't wear on the deposit slip where it says blessed assured. But you need both of them. A sworn for heaven and one to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to say something that's probably the most controversial thing I've ever said. If you don't have some insurance, get it. Amen. 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 Right. Now we talk about grieving and grief and mourn. It's really hard Amen. to grieve when there ain't no money to pay for a funeral. Amen. Amen. Come on now. You think Amen. you're having a hard time? Be run around here trying to get somebody to put some money in a can so you can get, a, get somebody buried. I'm telling you, folks are saying the ugliest things to you. Yeah. Yeah. I was out getting some money. This man went on and just went on by all oh, this old man. I won't tell you what he said. This old black man, whatever. That ain't what he really said. He said blah blah blah. He went. He he was talking. He was fussing at me. And I'm thinking I'm just out here collecting money. And out of all that fussing he did, I think he gave me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I said to myself. If I had known he was going to give me all that a dollar, I never would have knocked by his house. I could have put a dollar and saved myself a lot of grief. <laughs> the 
point I'm trying to make, y'all, I know nobody probably never said this to you, but get you some insurance. Amen. Get you some insurance. The church cannot afford to bury you. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And then you get mad. Well, you know, I paid my tithe. I gave money to the church. Yeah, you did all that, but we, you, you wouldn't buy an insurance. Hello. Don't look at me like that. You weren't paying on a life insurance policy. You were giving God what he already gave you that you owe him. So we don't owe you to have to do that. And no, it puts everybody in a precarious situation when that has to happen. Because we're trying to, we trying to walk around the eggshell. But what really should have happened, you should have took your candy money, your cigarette money, your Coca-Cola money, all that kind of stuff, and buy you some insurance. Yes, so that when your family have to bury you, that's one less problem they have to deal with. Amen. Now, you think this ain't happening? You go talk to this man up here. He'll tell you, he or any of these people will tell you, folks will make all these empty promises about, I'm going to do this, and as soon as they get mom and dad and brother and sister in the grave, they forget about that man. Amen. And then when he said he ain't going to bury nobody, oh, he's cold blooded. No, he ain't cold blooded. He just learned some lessons. Amen. Yeah. All right, let me move on because I see some of y'all looking at me. Guilt and pain. Now, let me tell you something about guilt. Guilt will kill you. Yeah. Now, y'all remember, y'all yeah. people that and, and I know this is fictional, but y'all remember a movie called The Imitation of Life? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cry every time. Y'all you know, remember back in the, in, in the day, there I go, there I go while I talk about the day, I guess. Uh, but can you remember back in the day, they had that movie, and the reason why I'm bringing that movie in is because that girl at the end, I ain't going to go through the whole movie, but because of the way she treated her mother, yeah. who was relentless yeah. in trying to treat her like a dog. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, when, when mama is dead, she comes running down the street screaming and hollering. You know why she was screaming and hollering? She was feeling guilty. Yeah. 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 Right. She guilty killed you too. Yeah. But here's the thing about it. When somebody, especially when they're sick or somebody going through whatever, do the best you can yeah. while they live it. Yeah. So that when they close their eyes, you will have the assurance and know, I did all I could. Yeah. Yeah. To try to make mama have a quality life. Daddy had a quality life. Yeah, yeah. I was there when daddy was needing some water. I brought water to his bed. I helped him change his bed pan. I, I helped daddy get his diaper on. I had to help mama get her diaper yeah. on. Do all you can so that when she, she, he or she or they shut their eyes, you don't have to come to the casket and take them out of the casket and scream and holler at them. Tell my mama, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I can't hear you. I know that. You heard it, you heard it. You, you, it's hard to you heard it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They ain't hear you. The time to say I'm sorry was the time they were still yet alive. Now you start drinking. Now you start taking dope. Now you start taking pills. Now you, come on, because this is what all that guilt leads to. Yeah, yeah. That's the person who could feel the realization of someone that the numbness leads. So do all you can. Amen. If you love somebody, tell them you love them today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's why I tell y'all every day, I love you. Every time we meet, I'm going to tell y'all I love you. Because I don't want you to have to come to my casket wondering how I felt about you. Amen. I need you to know while I'm alive that I love you. Amen. If you're going to tell a pastor you love him, don't wait till they put me in that glass bubble. Because I, I, listen, I ain't going to be listening. Watch it. <laughs> Even if I could hear Amy, I ain't listening to what y'all talking about. Because you had every, all this time to tell me while I was living how you felt about me. It's kind of comical. But we just, we just miss opportunity after opportunity to make people know how we feel about it. Tell me how you feel about me while I can hear it. Amen. Treat me with respect while I can feel it. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? We just spend too much time to have nine hour funerals. I'm, I went to a funeral that lasted six hours. They, they called from the cemetery, said, if y'all don't get here by five o'clock, you'll have to wait till next week and burn. Now listen to me. I, listen, whatever your cup of tea is, that's your cup of tea. But I'm not, I'm not going to let a bunch of preachers put my wife through a whole lot of y'all, 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 while they all trying to get up and I'll preach the other one, right? He said two words, I'm going to say four words. He said six. Now ain't none of that going to happen, right? Because I already got it planned out. Because she don't need to go through all of that. Because if you don't want to tell him about Brian, you should have told him why he was alive. Yeah, yeah. 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 I ain't putting up through no two funerals. I don't need no way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. You know what else you want? See, I don't need no way. I've been walking for 60 years. 
Call me another way. I'm going to simplify the process. All right, Pastor. <laughs> Y'all be thinking, oh, that boy just said anything. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you, man. I'm just trying to help you because we do a lot of foolish things. We get up and do all this lying about folk, amen. You know, and sometimes I go down where I'm walking, I may call to see. You can never cut my soul. So, so uh, to try to answer your question. It just, it just depends on the family. It really depends on the family. Now, I don't want to be cremated. If you cremate me, Sister Brown, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> did it that way. Now, since she brought that up, it, it just depends on which is best for the family. Mm -hmm. Now, economics right. is making a whole lot of people do cremation. Right. Because some people said it doesn't make sense to put all that money in the ground when I can cremate somebody. Right. Now, let's see the spiritual ramification. If I'm cremated, or if I'm buried, will that will that determine where I'm going? No, no. because if I might die in the law, right? He says, "Henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the law. Henceforth, their labor do follow them." Right? Now, economically, it's a lot of people are doing the cremation, 
Okay? No, but, but that brings up another situation. Okay? And I'm glad you asked that because I'm going to piggyback off of that. We have a lot of people, she said she didn't bring her husband to church. You know, what, what kind of disturbs me is that people that don't go to church, who don't know the law, who had a whole lifetime to get to know the law, people want to run them into the church and get mad if they don't get the same treatment as somebody who died in the law, right? Amen. Now, why force somebody to come to church that wouldn't come to church when they were alive? Right. 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 Now, my brother died. Again, I'm talk, always talking about me. My brother, my brother died. I'm just, I'm gonna put this little business out there. I'm not trying to judge him. I'm trying to show y'all what I'm talking about. My brother was kind of into the drug world, okay? And he was doing some things illegally that he shouldn't have been done. So when he died. There was a whole lot of people saying, well, let's have this family in the North Star. I said, well, if y'all want me to attend, and especially if you want me to do the eulogy, we will not be having it at North Star and no other star. We won't be having it in the church, period. Mm -hmm. we, will go, we will go to the graveyard, whatever, right? Because there was no need to chapel because he didn't come to church. Mm -hmm. The church was not a priority for him. So I just don't believe, because let me tell you something. If I die in my sins and they have my funeral at the cathedral, it doesn't matter. It's not going to have any, in, any impact on where I'm going. Yeah. If I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell straight from the church. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's right. But we run them in here thinking that some kind of way that's going to save them. But it don't help them a bit because they're dead. Amen. 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 Uh-oh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Where it was saying about God wanted a separation between I think I don't know, I'm not putting this right. Between the unclean and the clean. Okay. He didn't allow a body to be brought inside the sanctuary because he said that was the power. Well, listen. I, I understand I've read that too. Yeah. And that's part of but 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 that but but that's not the same thing that there are some churches, for example, that won't let you bring a dead body into that church. Okay? The Jehovah Witness will not allow you to bring a dead body for maybe for the maybe they read that. And that's that 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 is subject when you when now see I don't want to, I don't want to get into a confrontation with her because see some things we read we, we have to make sure that we have a clear understanding of what we're saying because when you when you go when you go talk about Aramaic and Greek and all that you take that same scripture and I get it from the Greek Bible and it'll mean something completely different. So for the sake of not going back and forth with her, there are some churches that probably based on what she said that don't allow dead bodies to come into their buildings mm -hmm. because they feel like it's defiled. But again, I, again, I, my argument is going to be. What, whatever's in you, if you are saved or unsaved, the, 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 the separation is coming, right? That's why we're going to have a judgment to separate the, the right from the wrong. Yeah, yeah. The weak from the tap, mm -hmm. right? The unrighteous from the righteous, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's, 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 if, you know, that's, some people have that autonomy. We allow people to come in our church uh, and, and we celebrate the, the because the Bible said, blessed are the, of the saints of uh, God. What is the word? It says the saints, precious in the sight, is the saint, the death of a saint. Okay? So we believe, based on our Baptist belief, that it's all right to bring a body in. Other churches may not ascribe to that, and that's okay. But I don't believe one way or the other will be cremated or buried in a church or out of church has no outcome on where we're going. Mm -hmm. So since I know that, I'm not going to belabor that point because. I don't think it's going to be beneficial to any of us and we believe just as long as I know that if I die in the Lord, I'm going to heaven. If I die outside of the, of the Lord, I'm going to hell. But that's crystal clear. Ain't no ambiguity about it. There's no questions about it. The scripture is clear on what it says about that. Amen. Yes, sir. Well, you have to understand that the different uh, parts of the world, they bury people different. Of course. It's culturally based. It's, it's based on culture, you know. In, in, the, in, in the biblical time, they did a whole lot of things biblically. In, in the biblical time, ancient times, that we don't do that, they don't do that today. They call those were different times. Go ahead. And when you like, like, like 
a long time ago when you when they when they die on the sea, uh -huh. we, we can't bury nobody, so the only thing to do is toss them over the ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here's the good thing about that again, let me centralize that. Because the book of Revelation said that when all these things, when Christ comes together, the sea got to give up its dead. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. All these ways these people die, they got to give up their dead so that they, it, depending on how they die, they got to stand before God and give account of what they did while they were in the body. Good so we respect that because Muslims do different things. Jewish people do different things. Christian people do different things. People who believe in Judaism do different things. You go to a certain country, they might, you know, they might do this with a body. You go to this country. I'll tell you something. I think it's sacrilegious. They get into this thing where they put people, they die, and they put them on motorcycles, and, and, and they put them in, in slaves and taking them to the fire ride. Now, to me, that's a, that's a desecration type of thing. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, that's a desecration. Again, I just want us to be concerned about this. How we die, how we live, how we die is going to determine where we go. Amen. Amen. And, and, and again, again, if you don't want to go to church when you're alive, don't force them to go to church when they're dead. Because they don't change the outcome. And I, we, we, we want to take this time to say, because we are ignorant. And when I'm saying we're ignorant, I'm not talking about you specifically. But we do a lot of ignorant things around death, right? We do a lot of ignorant things. And we need to be educated. Yeah. Amen. We need to be educated. Don't run, don't run somebody into the church when they die. Don't make no fuss about that. Because it ain't going to make no... If, if they take me to the chapel, and I know I'm saying, but it don't matter. Because guess what? The chapel, there's no determination as where I'm going to end my eternity. Amen. Because that's just a body. I'm not there no more. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord, right? Amen. So guess we just talking about dirt right now. That's all they, all they did was put a bunch of fluid in something that's already decomposing. Right? I'm going back to the dust from which I came. Right? I'm gone. When they lay that body out of here, that ain't me. That is not going to be me. That's going to be the house where I used to live. I'm gone. I'm vacated. That's why the song said there's a leak in this old building and my soul has begun to move. When I take my last breath, brother Liga, I'm gone from this body. They can dress it up and make it look good and put makeup on it and do my eyes together and put me in a nice, beautiful suit. I hope they will, but I'm gone. I'm going to be my robe and my crown that was promised to me. We got a little off subject there, but I just want to put all that back together. <laughs> it's part of being able to deal with the with the with the, with the bar. So the next step is thank you, sister, for that question. Uh, anger. Let me tell you when people when people are dealing with laws, you have to be careful how you deal with them, because sometimes they'll they'll they, in the middle of that anger, sometimes they may say things that can be hurtful. Because I'm really mad because my loved one died. Mm -hmm. And you said something to me and I just pop off at you. Well, I'm really not in my right mind. Because I'm really grieving. Right? And I'm looking for something to focus my energy on. And just so happened you were the one that I focused. I really didn't mean that. But anger is one of the things that we deal with. People go through this phrase, lash out. Mm -hmm. Talk smart. Mm -hmm. Become sarcastic. Leave me alone. Oh man, that, that don't sound like Reverend Brown. He, he don't act like that. Well, I'm dealing with anger right now. Anybody ever been angry? Come on, y'all. I didn't hear nobody. Let me do my side. Anybody over here on this side ever been angry? Yeah. 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 This side. Oh, yeah. If you don't raise your hand, I'd be lying. I'm going to ask for a feeling of helplessness. One may place. Unwanted, actual feeling of helplessness. Boy, mate, please. Undo blame. You know, okay, the doctor killed my mom. The nurse killed my mom. Right? Uh, they, didn't, they, they let her stay in the emergency room too long. And, and that may be true. But that ain't going to break her back. Amen. That ain't going to make no difference if she's dead, whether she kept in the emergency room too long or not. It's still the reality is that she's dead, right? 
So you have to get over you have to restrain the relationship of the living, right? Makes brothers and sisters, husbands and fathers, and it puts a strain on them. Everybody walk around on eggshell. Don't hey, don't sit on this path. Sue called. Boy, I said something kind of she went off on me. Now I got a teeter around a soup. I really need to talk some business with her, but she's kind of on the edge right now. And I, I know that, you know, I got, I still ain't quite saved myself. So if she said anything to me that's out of the way, it's going to be all of it. Come on, y'all, I'm talking real talk. She better not, she better not say that to me. Because I'm ready for her. Yeah. Next thing you don't know, you and Susie fighting, and we have to talk. I've been to the funeral where we've been at the house. Tell you about some of my experience. Well, we had to call the law. Not the police, the law. Because <laughs> Susie and John is in the house fighting, and we're on our way to the funeral. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got to go to the church. And deal with a volatile situation because Sue might get up and say something about John and it's on again. Mm-hmm. That's why the preacher, let me tell y'all, let me just give him the shoe yeah. button and act the way he does at the funeral because we're trying to keep order. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all don't know what happened in the house before we got there in the procession line and you said, why is the pastor so antagonistic? Why is he trying to be a dictator? Because I'm trying to keep the peace. Yeah. <laughs> Because if I don't do what I say I'm going to do, then I'm going to have chaos. Yeah. And then who are you going to blame? Well, Reverend Brown, you know, he is the pastor. He should have been on top of that. Yeah. You, you ain't going to say, say Clarence Hallman or Calvin Johnson or, or, or Devereaux. You're going to say Pastor Brown. Yeah. Pastor Brown, we know what's going on. But he should be in charge. And if that happens in his watch, we're going to lay it on his responsibility. So since you're going to keep me responsible, I'm going to make sure I'm in charge. Because you're going to blame me anyway, right? So when I ask you to get up and say two minutes, and you want to go five minutes, and I say, well, sit down, you know, brother, you went over your time, now you want to get all been out of shape, you want to challenge me in the church, right? And that's the wrong place to challenge me. Because guess what? If I let you challenge me and be successful, I'm going to have a whole... So you become the scapegoat. Because I told you two minutes. Right? Because the family told me they didn't want you up singing when you spoke and reading the scripture. They said read the scripture. They didn't say read that saying. They just said read. So I'm going to make sure that's all you do is read. And you ain't going to read the whole Bible. You're going to read the scripture. Am I right, Brother Devereaux? Right. Somebody tell me I'm right. 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 If I'm right. Don't tell me if I'm right and I'm not right. 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 These are lessons in practicality. Right. We need to learn these things so that we can make it so much easier for everybody that's involved. Grief, strain, relationship, it preserves relationship. It is imperative that we find a way to release our extreme emotions. Because we got, we got all this bottle of rock, man. I just need to find a, a correct avenue to get it out. Mm-hmm. Then to do so may permanently damage the tide. I ain't spoke to my brother since my mother's born. Mm-hmm. I ain't spoke to my sister since mama died. Mm-hmm. I ain't spoke to my uncle since, since his sister died. Mm-hmm. But I'm a Christian. Mm-hmm. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm on my way to hell. Mm-hmm. But I'm just not speaking to another author. No more. I'm off, I wrote him off. He's no longer important to me, but I'm going to heaven anyway. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not going to heaven and then wrote Uncle off out. You better get it straight. You and Uncle Arthur better sit down somewhere and get that stuff straightened out before you die. Talking right. right. practical stuff, dealing with grief more, because this helps us to grieve, it helps us to mourn, it helps us to deal with our bereavement when we get all this other stuff in all, right? When you drive in a car and it's out of balance, or you need a front of your line, what happens to your car? Take your hand off the wheel, this is. When you get your, when you get your world aligned, got the proper air, what do you do? Your car drives what? Move the straight. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. Any more questions?
Any more comments? Any stories to tell? Anybody got any, anything you want to share with the group? Yes, ma'am. Did you say something? Oh, I thought I said So these things are real. That's we established in the last time. Grief is real. Mourning is real. And bereavement is real. Amen. And we want to approach it in a Christian manner. Show people how much you love them. Somebody you know that you know you need to fix something with, take tonight. Tonight. Let the night be the night you call that person that you had all with. And get straight out. Okay? Because it'll help you in the morning. It'll help you to grieve better. And it'll help you deal with your bereavement. Anybody got any questions? We have materials over here. There are materials. We have a question box. There's a question box in the forms out there. I just made a makeshift box. It's not a professional box. So don't grade me on the box. Don't go out there and look at the box and say, he couldn't have so much breath. Don't grade me on the box. Or even my hand right, because it's atrocious. Just get the form out and send your question out. Put it back in the box and go handle it, okay? Amen. All right, anybody else got anything before we pray and close this set? Do y'all feel like this is heavy? Do y'all feel like this? Amen. Is it going to be any help out of this? Because this is what it's all about. Now, if it's not next week, we got, I've got two people I'm going to bring, two different people uh, from the hospice of East Texas. One of them is the lady that's going to come out and explain to us about hospice and all of the things about hospice. Okay? And then one of the guys that's going to come out, the guy that's going to come out, is going to actually give us a, somewhat of a simple yet an overview of bereavement. And the reason why I'm bringing these people is because there might be somebody who privately okay, might want to talk to these people and they may be able to set up an appointment to, because if you're dealing with grief and all this, don't sit at home in the house, in the dark, cut yourself off from everybody else. That's unhealthy. Get the need, get the help that you need, right? That don't make you be weak. That don't make you be a lot of Christian. It don't make you be unsaved. Because if you really say, the Lord, the Lord helps us in many ways. Amen. Okay? So we want you to get the help you need, right? If I need the help, I'm, I ain't telling everybody I need the help, but if I do need some help, I'm going to get me some help. Amen. Don't tell me nobody talking about me. I'm going to steal away if I can park my car behind the building. Because there ain't nobody's business that I need help. Right? Y'all believe that? Amen. The church don't need to know in a public service announcement that Brother Little Leaguer going to hospice training or whatever. That's his business. Amen. Right? And we hurt people when we put people's business in the street. Amen. We do damage. Amen. And the Lord will hold us accountable for everybody that we hurt and damage. Amen. Well, what I don't, I don't really. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that I, I can't really speak for her. I'm assuming when she comes and gives her presentation that she may allocate some time for that. But even if she doesn't, she's probably going to bring some forms with numbers on it to where you can call her when she's in the office and explain to you and set up a phone call. They'll, when I went out there to talk to them, because I went out there to talk to them extensively about what I was doing. And they, they are there to help. And they, they, want, they want to be able to help the community, the church, and everybody that's involved. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption, based on, what I, the, based on the talks that I've had with them, that they're more than eager to, to answer any questions or any concerns that you might have. Now, they may not have the time allocated in this particular session, but I'm sure if you get their number and talk to them, they would be more than happy to share with you in person. In my I just want you to know these people and to know where they are so if you need them, you can find them. Amen. Amen. Okay? And I want to thank, where's Sister Jackie? Where's Sister Jackie McCall? Okay, Sister Jackie, let me just say this and we go close. I am so glad that she came to me in a nice and respectable way and said, Brother Pastor, we, you know, depression. She didn't say it like that. I'm just saying people are dealing with death and all the death of loved ones and co-workers and COVID and all these other things, we've been bottled up, we've been locked up in the house, we've been able to do stuff that's normal and so forth. And I just think it would be nice of you to do something, you know, like this. And so I, I got to give her the credit that she came to me and I, I thought about it, I prayed about it. I said, you know what, this will be a great thing. Amen. 
I say, again, if one person is help by me doing this, it would have been worth the time. And I already feel, as a result of what I've seen and heard, that somebody's already been helped. Amen. Amen. Somebody's already been facilitated. The next experience with death they have is going to be a much better experience than what it was before we had this session. Amen. Because they got some information that they can use to help them cope. Because it's all about coping. Amen. It's all about coping. All right, I'm going to close this session. Uh, anything else? Any, any other questions? Any other concerns? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I think that when you have these sessions, I think it would be well to we invite other people to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to put it on Facebook and say, Hospice of East Texas will be, uh, and we'll probably even call uh, the radio station. Uh, what is that radio station where a bishop is on? What's, what's the name of it? We'll put the word out there and uh, be prepared for the accommod to accommodate a large crowd. But we want, we want people in the community. You help us put the word out that whenever we do set this up, that we'll have these people out here so, so somebody can benefit from their comedy. But we're not selfish. Amen. We want our whole community to be healthy. Amen. And one of our part of our community is unhealthy. We are all unhealthy. Amen. So go the community, so go us. Make sense? Yes. yes all right, can we stand up and pray? Thank y'all for your endurance and thank y'all for, for your patience and your time. I presented it the best way I knew how. You know, it may not have been perfect, but I gave it to you the best way I knew. I could give it to you. Maybe, you know. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For this session. Yes. Yeah. We thank you for these people who are at law. We thank you for every question. We thank you for every bit of information. We just pray now, God, that you will help us. Boy, yeah. Even as I pray tonight, mm -hmm. it's possible that someone here in this congregation right now mm -hmm. is just dealing with a monumental problem, mm -hmm. dealing with death. Yep. I pray, God, whoever they might be, mm -hmm. that you would console their hearts, mm -hmm. that you would speak to their minds, mm -hmm. that you would speak to their physical beings. Mm -hmm. And have them to know that earth, you know, we, Lord, sometimes when we say that, I'm praying that you will literally make them know that earth really doesn't have no sorrow that heaven and its agents cannot heal. Mm -hmm. I pray, God, that somebody that's dealing with bereavement right now, stress and depression and anxiety, will be able to, over, in their own time, be able to overcome and, and live what we would classify as a normal life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dry up their teary eyes. Yeah. Mend their broken heart. Yeah. Renew their yeah. torn down spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That they may be able to look to the hills yeah. and see all of our help yeah. coming from the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.